Cars are a big part of my life. I have to have one with me because that's my release, that's my personality. My personality comes out when I have my car with me. The car community has taught me so many things and it's driven me to so many people that I would have never met otherwise. It's got a special place in my heart. My name is Jordan Evans. I'm a muscle car tech at Speedway Motors and this is my 1985 Trans Am. This car is never going to be done because it's in a constant state of broken. I will absolutely never paint the car because it's not worth it to me. The speedometer doesn't work in this thing. It worked for about three months. It's always going to stay a stock suspension, small tire car. This one has what started out to be a junkyard LS that I bought when I was 17 for the car. And it sat around for about six years before it finally got put together. It's bored out a little bit. It's got a forged dome piston in it, stock rod, stock crank, junkyard LS3 heads. And the thing that everybody just loves to hate is it's got a carburetor on it. The favorite thing about this car is how bad it makes people feel when they get outran by an 80s mullet having Trans Am with paint flaking off of it. You just got outran by a car that was built from a junkyard. I kind of like the ratty muscle car look, and this isn't what I really consider as much of a muscle car as, say, you know, a, an old Roadrunner or Chevelle, Nova, Camaro, anything like that. It's the achievable version of the ratty muscle car that some of you that my age can get into. Bought it for 1700 bucks a little over eight years ago. It was my first car. It's a car I'll never get rid of. Because if it wasn't for this car and the people that I had met over the years, it wouldn't have led me to meeting my wife. I first got into cars through my husband. I met him through the car community. We had some mutual friends in common, and he took me for a ride in his Corvette one day, and from then he showed me how fun cars can be. My name is JC Evans. I'm a customer experience team lead at Speedway Motors, and this is my 1972 Vega GT. Originally, I was looking for a Nova or something a little more common you know, a little easier to find parts for. We found this Vega and uh, my husband showed me a picture of it. And I knew in that moment when I looked at it, that, that was it, that was my car. Well, I got into a low speed front end collision and then it was auctioned off. Um, and then it sat in my father-in-law's boss's backyard for a while. He was like, I don't care when you pay me or how you pay me. It's like, just come get it out of my yard. I fell in love with kind of the patina style. From then on, I was like, hey, who cares about paint? My favorite thing about this car is that it's basically a time capsule. You open up the, the door, the front door. I mean, interior looks brand new. It sounds silly, but I didn't want to feel gross sitting in my car. I wanted it to be comfortable, and that thing is one of the comfiest cars I've ever sat in. This is getting a 5.3 LS in it, and then just a TH350. It's just kind of something for me to throw together, for me to learn on, um, tinker on myself. The hope for it was to be kind of a street strip car, um, a little more versatile, so mostly just a street car, just something for me to have fun in. As cheesy as it sounds, the first thing I want to do when this car is up and running, take it out for a cruise on O Street. Nothing more classic than that, I guess, in my eyes. We had the car for, I think, about six months, and my birthday rolled around, and my husband and I were not present people. But he called me out one day, and Jordan says, all right, I got you your present. He said, it's in the glove box. I open it up, and sure enough, he went, got the title for me. I cried. It was the most touching, thing I think anybody could have ever gotten me. If you want to test your relationship and see, you know, who's going to light the first match at the other one, work on your car together. Because you're going to get frustrated at times. And if you can get through that, 
I like to think that you can get through about anything. I didn't like cars before. I didn't understand that. And even when we met, I had kind of had that impression of, well, you're spending more time on your car than you are with me. I had to ask him, why do you like this thing so much? And it really clicked from that point. It, it made so much sense. And here I am, you know, five years later with my own project. And I get it. When we met, she was the kind of girl that did not want to get dirty at all. Any sort of grease or oil, she stayed as far away from as possible. Now our date nights consist of going to the junkyard because that's what gets her excited. I love going to U-Bullet. <laughs> so we had been dating for about a year and a half and he gets the bright idea to propose to me. That was his push to get the car running again. The night before was my deadline to get the car running because I was gonna propose to her October 15th, no matter what, because it was a year and a half exactly from the day that we met. We got the car running October 15th at one o'clock in the morning in my attached garage in my apartment complex. Open headers. He got it running and drove it out to a cute little spot with a, a wooden bridge. He set it up like, hey, we're just, we're just doing a photo shoot today because you've been bothering me about it. Like I had always wanted to get some nice pictures of us. And so set it up to do a photo shoot and he posed in the middle of it. And she said yes. It's definitely special to him, and you can tell in the way he talks about it and the way his eyes light up when he talks about it. It always pays off in the end, like knowing he's doing something he loves and is so happy with, and just being supportive is all that matters in that moment. And knowing that's gonna pay off the same way in the end with my car, that's worth it.